Transporting massive objects such as oil platforms or nuclear reactors is a monumental undertaking that demands exceptional levels of logistics and meticulous planning. So in today's video, we're going to count down the top 15 largest objects ever transported in history. Let's begin with number 15, NASA's Crawler Transporters. In the realm where science fiction and reality intersect, the line can be often blurred, and NASA has taken this concept to an entirely new level with the awe-inspiring crawler transporters. Bearing an uncanny resemblance to colossal vehicles that could traverse the arid landscapes of Arrakis laden with precious spice, these mechanical behemoths have fulfilled a multitude of functions. However, their primary purpose remains constant the transportation of gargantuan payloads that defy conventional expectations. It's kind of almost like they sprung from the pages of a science fiction novel to prove that reality can be just as incredible. Foremost among their high-profile cargo assignments were the iconic Saturn rockets that fueled the aspirations of the Apollo programs. NASA commands a pair of these remarkable machines, each carrying a price tag of about $14 million. And upon their completion, the crawler transporters earned the esteemed title of being the largest self-propelled terrestrial vehicles globally, serving as a testament to human engineering. Sporting eight tracks that facilitate movement, these vehicles have a surface area capable of accommodating a staggering mass of 6 million pounds. The dimensions are 131 by 144 feet, and their sheer scale is a sight to behold. Behind these mechanical marvels lies a dedicated team of about 30 engineers, technicians, and adept drivers who collectively orchestrate this intricate ballet of operating these things. Their nerve center is the control room, where the expertise and coordination converge to guide these leviathans on their monumental journeys. And while their most renowned role involves ferrying space rockets, the crawler transporters can even haul space shuttles. Number 14. Stonehenge Megaliths one of the world's biggest mysteries also happens to involve some of the largest objects ever transported, Stonehenge in Wiltshire, England. The two main types of stones at Stonehenge are the sarsen stones, which form the outer circle and lintels, and the blue stone, which form the inner circle. The sarsen stones are massive sandstone blocks thought to have been transported from a quarry located about 25 miles north of Stonehenge, near the village of Marlborough Downs. Some estimates suggest that the largest sarsen stones weigh as much as 50 tons, and researchers believe that ancient people used a combination of sleds, wooden rollers, and possibly even water to move the stones over a relatively short distance. The blue stones are smaller and comprised of a type of volcanic rock called dolerite. The transportation of these stones is a bit more mysterious. These stones are believed to have been sourced from the Priscelli Hills in southwest Wales, over 150 miles away from Stonehenge. Theories about their transportation include the use of sleds, rafts along waterways, and even the possibility that glaciers transported some of the stones closer to the site during the last ice age. The exact methods used in the transportation and construction of Stonehenge remain a subject of ongoing research and, of course, debate. Archaeologists and engineers have conducted experiments to test different transportation theories, and there's no consensus on a single method that was definitively used. Number 13. Bagger 288 The Bagger 258 is a bucket wheel excavator built by the heavy machinery company Lauchhammer. First put to use in East Germany in 1964, the Bagger was one of a series of such machines whose task it was to assist in intensive mining operations. The Bagger 288 had the honor of being the biggest land vehicle in the world for the last 40 years, standing eight stories tall and weighing over 13,500 tons. So at 315 feet high and 788 feet long, this massive machine needs just over 16 kilowatts of external power to keep the 70-foot bucket wheel churning all day. This excavator was built by the Krupp Company for Rheinbraun to go to work at the Tagebau Hambach strip mine in Germany and can extract 240,000 tons a day. And it only took 23 years for this thing to totally exhaust this mine for good. The Bagger 288 was abandoned in 2002 for no better reason than it had simply run out of things to dig. By this point, the behemoth was showing its age, and the cost of dismantling it wasn't justified by the tired mechanisms on offer. Instead, the area around it was replanted and redeveloped as a solar park. But just before it retired, Bagger 288 was on the move. Despite its size, it went for a 14-mile road trip to the Gartzweiler mine running on its 12 Caterpillar tracks. Just imagine seeing this thing driving down the street. You'd be forgiven for thinking that it's on its way to fight a kaiju. Number 12. The Space Shuttle Endeavor If you were living in Los Angeles, California in 2012, then you may remember this one. 
Space shuttles are meant to, well, go to space. But what happens to them when they become decommissioned? Did they go to the great gig in the sky? Well, the space shuttle Endeavour didn't. NASA's orbiter was finally retired after 25 missions, and the organization decided to hand it over to the California Science Center in Los Angeles. But how exactly were they to get it there? The Endeavour was delivered to the International Airport LAX and then transported through the streets of Los Angeles. The transport operation was incredibly slow, taking three days before it made it to the Science Center, giving local bystanders a free once-in-a-lifetime parade. But it wasn't easy, because as you can imagine, the streets of LA are notorious for their traffic. So streets were closed down to cars, and there were many instances where the only thing between the shuttle's wings and telephone poles, homes and apartment buildings, was just about an inch of space. One wrong move to the left, and yep, it's all over. The city of LA had to remove street lights, traffic signals, and even 400 trees along the street to make the move possible. In the end, the entire endeavor of transporting the endeavor ran up a bill of about $200 million. Number 11. Rockefeller Center Christmas Tree There are a million things to do in New York City, but the city that never sleeps is a mecca for Christmas lovers all over. Of all the New York City holiday traditions, filing into Rockefeller Center to see the famous Christmas tree continues to be a source of perennial fanfare. No matter what's happening in the world, the tree puts a smile on the faces of the hundreds of thousands of spectators every year. Year after year, there's a calming reassurance in knowing this story's high spectacle will land smack in the middle of town. But one mystery that remains in this worldwide mainstay, how does the tree get to the plaza every year? And better yet, who finds it? Eric Paws, the head gardener for Rockefeller Center and seemingly the Santa Claus of Christmas trees, each year for three decades, Paws has been instrumental in scouting, nurturing, and more importantly, transporting the Norway spruce to Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. In 2022, he found the perfect specimen, standing 82 feet tall with a 50-foot diameter, and that's technically on the smaller side. Previous trees have stood well over 100 feet and can weigh well over 10 tons. The master gardener finds the tree in May and continues to water and measure it until it's cutting time, then wrapping each branch of the tree so it doesn't bend or snap to compress the width down so it's fit for travel. The tree is then lifted by crane onto a flatbed and makes its way to the Big Apple, where another crane awaits. From there, the tree needs to be decorated, which is a sight unto itself. This Norway spruce is decorated with a whopping 50,000 multicolored solar-powered LED lights that add to the splendor of the New York skyline until the new year. Number 10. The Toshiba Engine Back in the year 2010, the Texas Department of Transportation found itself facing a task that could be described as nothing short of gargantuan. I'm talking about a task that's as weighty as an 850-ton behemoth. So, what was this monumental mission all about, you ask? Well, they had the ambitious goal of transporting an immense Toshiba steam turbine all the way from the bustling port of Houston to a power plant nestled in the heart of Riesel. Now, let's just pause and consider the magnitude of this journey for a moment. On an ordinary day, covering the distance from Houston to Riesel might take around two and a half hours. But picture this, taking that same distance with an 850-ton load in tow. That's the kind of feat that demands a little more logistical wizardry. So, what did the brilliant minds at the Texas Department of Transportation do? Well, they rolled up their sleeves and devised a solution that was as audacious as it was impressive. They conjured up a custom rig that's unlike anything you'd see on an average road trip. This marvel of engineering was none other than a combination of not one, but two trusty truck cabs, joined together by a staggering total of 520 tires. Now, let's be honest, this uh, makeshift creation might not have won any beauty contests, but boy did it get the job done. It is a true testament to the fact that sometimes it's not about looking elegant, it's about getting the gears turning and making things happen. This wasn't your run-of-the-mill road trip either, it was an odyssey. Covering a distance of 250 miles from one city to the next, this Toshiba steam turbine engine had to brave state roads and even venture across an astonishing 82 bridges. And here's the twist. It moved at a pace that could only be described as leisurely, chugging along at a steady 10 miles per day. You might wonder why the snail's pace. Well, it's a classic tale of putting safety first and avoiding any hiccups when you're moving something as awe-inspiringly massive as the Lone Star State itself. When all was said and done, the Texas Department of Transportation could proudly raise its hats and claim an achievement of grand proportions. The Toshiba steam turbine engine, an 850-ton Leviathan, had been gracefully transported across 250 miles of Texas terrain. 
As the dust settled and the cheers echoed through the Lone Star State, they made it official. This journey marked the record for the heaviest load ever moved over such a considerable distance within Texas. Number 9. The Levitated Mass The transportation of the levitated mass, a monumental feat of engineering and artistry, captured the world's attention as it embarked on a journey that defied norms and pushed the boundaries of what's possible. This extraordinary project, led by artist Michael Heiser, involved the movement of a 340-ton boulder across land and communities to its final resting place at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. The star of the show was the levitated mass itself, a colossal granite rock measuring 21 and a half feet in height, 10 feet in width, and again, 340 tons in weight. But the real story here wasn't just the rock. It was the audacious idea of moving it across a distance of over 100 miles from a quarry in Riverside County to Los Angeles. To tackle the challenge, they really turned the levitated mass into a rolling stone. A specially designed transporter was crafted, complete with custom-built trailer and a network of support systems. This massive transporter, equipped with 196 wheels and having a length of 294 feet, was responsible for carrying this mass on its unprecedented journey. To get this thing across 22 counties, it was transported in the dead of night on roads closed off to all other traffic. This allowed the mass to take up as much space as they needed without causing a stir. But if you think this 196-wheeler was burning rubber down the open road, then think again, because it inched its way at 10 miles an hour. And going that slow, it took a week and a half to complete the journey. Now, the levitated mass sits perched above visitors who are brave enough to walk underneath it. Number 8. British Power Transformer Brace yourself for a transportation saga that redefines the concept of slow and steady. In the annals of colossal transport undertakings, the year 2013 marked a momentous event for Britain as it bore witness to the awe-inspiring movement of the largest object ever traversing her royal roads, a power station transformer tipping the scales at a staggering 640 tons. But here's the kicker. This piece of equipment required a vehicle that could even make Goliath look small. Imagine a vehicle so colossal, so massive, that it stretched a mind-bending 328 feet in length and sprawled an impressive 16 feet in width. This vehicular titan wasn't designed for speed, as it trudged along at an almost comically modest pace of 4 miles an hour. It's the kind of pace that would make a tortoise seem like an Olympic sprinter. The sheer magnitude of this endeavor becomes apparent when you consider that planning this extraordinary transport escapade spanned nine months. Imagine the logistical intricacies of orchestrating a journey that would make a snail's pace seem brisk. As the vehicle embarked on its epic journey, it was joined by a supporting cast of no less than 20 other vehicles, including the obligatory presence of police cars. You'd think that a convoy of this magnitude would travel the roads under the cover of night shrouded in darkness? Well, yeah, no. British laws had other ideas, prohibiting police escorts for large hauls during the nighttime hours. Thus, this grand spectacle unfolded during daylight hours with roads open to regular traffic. The power transformer-laden vehicle took up two lanes of the highway and caused a traffic jam that went back for 13 miles. That's one commute home from work that you did not want to be stuck in. Moving on to number 7, the Saturn V rocket. Launching the Saturn V rocket is pretty impressive on its own, but transporting here on Earth is just as tough. The Saturn V rocket, the iconic vessel that propelled the Apollo missions to the moon, stands as a testament to mankind's determination to explore the cosmos and conquer the unknown. Imagine the scene, a behemoth of a technological marvel standing at a staggering height over 360 feet with its three stages stacked like a colossal tower of scientific achievement. The transportation of the Saturn V rocket was a carefully orchestrated ballet involving a series of intricate steps and an army of dedicated experts. Preparation for the rocket's journey began at the manufacturing and assembly facilities. Each stage of the rocket was meticulously designed, tested, and constructed. The rocket's size and complexity required not only specialized equipment, but also innovative techniques to ensure safe and efficient transport. The first stage, powered by five F-1 engines, was transported horizontally from its assembly point to the launch site atop a massive mobile platform known as the Crawler Transporter. Now, we talked about this. The behemoth of a vehicle featuring enormous treads and weighing several million pounds was custom designed to carry the extraordinary weight of the Saturn V. The Crawler Transporter's journey was an exercise in patience and precision. 
Its speed never exceeded a snail's pace, reaching just a few miles per hour as it maneuvered through the Kennedy Space Center's infrastructure. The path was meticulously cleared of any obstacles and the ground was reinforced to withstand the immense weight. The rocket's journey to the launch pad took several hours, transforming this spectacle into a true event. Upon reaching the launch pad, the Saturn V rocket was carefully hoisted into its vertical position, ready to defy Earth's gravity and carry astronauts on a journey to the moon. This process required another intricate dance of hydraulic systems, cranes, and engineering mastery. But just imagine seeing it rolling down the highway. Number 6. The Muon G2 the Muon G2 storage ring is a scientific experiment designed to measure the magnetic movement of the Muon, a subatomic particle that's similar to an electron but is much more massive. The experiment aims to precisely determine the anomalous magnetic moment of the Muon, which is a measure of how the Muon's magnetic properties differ from what would be expected based on the standard model of particle physics. The original Muon G2 experiment was conducted at Brookhaven National Lab in the 1990s, yielding intriguing results that deviated slightly from theoretical predictions. Now, those deviations could potentially point to the influence of unknown particles or forces. So, the machine does a lot of cool things. But even cooler was trying to move it, specifically the storage ring. The storage ring, a colossal electromagnet weighing over 15 tons and spanning 50 feet in diameter, is a critical component of that groundbreaking experiment. The complexity of moving the Muon G2 storage ring demanded a multidisciplinary approach. Engineers, physicists, logisticians, and transportation experts collaborated to ensure the safe and precise transfer. This is a journey that spanned over 3,000 miles and involved an intricate choreography of technological feats where precision reigned supreme. A deviation of mere millimeters could render the entire experiment futile. Advanced GPS systems, inertial measurement units, and real-time monitoring were implemented to track the storage ring's position and orientation at all times. Some stopovers were utilized for meticulous adjustments, guaranteeing that the ring's integrity remained intact. The ring, housed within a cylindrical structure, was first carefully disconnected and prepared for transport. Shielded from external influences, it needed to be kept within strict environmental conditions to preserve its delicate alignment. Specially designed platforms were employed to maintain stability, shielding the apparatus from vibrations and fluctuations. It was transported in one piece from Brookhaven in Long Island, New York, to Fermilab in the summer of 2013. The move was 3,200 miles over 35 days, mostly on a barge down the East Coast and through Mobile, Alabama, to the Tennessee Tombigbee Waterway, and then briefly on the Mississippi. The initial and final legs were on a special truck traveling closed highways at night. Number 5. The Ostehanstein Spar the Ostehanstein Spar is a marvel of offshore engineering that embodies innovation, resilience, and the relentless pursuit of energy resources beneath the ocean's surface. This offshore platform, situated in the waters of the Norwegian Sea, stands as a testament to human ingenuity. Picture a colossal vertical cylinder towering over 1,100 feet above the sea surface and delving into the ocean's depths. This is the Asa Hunstein Spar, a floating offshore platform designed to extract natural gas from beneath the waves. The spar's design is akin to an inverted pendulum, with the majority of its structure submerged underwater to provide stability in the face of powerful ocean currents. Its journey began with meticulous planning and design. It was named after Norwegian painter and early feminist Ashta Hanstein, and the platform was conceived as a solution to the unique challenges posed by the Norwegian Sea's unpredictable weather and rugged conditions. The spar's design allows it to sway gently with the sea's motion, like a buoyant metronome 186 miles from the shore in the Norwegian Sea. In fact, the spar is the first platform of its kind to sit on the Norwegian continental shelf. The spar also happens to be the largest spar platform ever built in terms of diameter and displacement. It stands at 650 feet tall, with 580 feet being submerged beneath the waves. It's also got a diameter of 164 feet across. But they're not building this in the middle of the ocean, no way, and building it was one thing, but getting it to its final resting place is a whole other tale. Instead of working from the ground up, engineers built it on its side, on barges in the dry dock. And once it was finally built and ready to go, they hauled it off on those floating barges and then onto the dockwise Vanguard, the largest ship of her kind. For a full 60 days in 2017, and eventually, she was upended in the waters of Klosterfjorden. 
That's a journey that's longer than the voyage of the Statue of Liberty. But the work wasn't done, because now the spar needed to be transported vertically to the gas field off the northwest coast of Norway before it was moored almost 4,000 feet into the seabed. When it was on the move, this behemoth was the largest thing traversing through the sea, giving something like the Megalodon a run for its money. Number 4. Bullwinkle Bullwinkle may be the name of a certain moose from our childhood, but it's also the name of one of the largest oil platforms in the world. Bullwinkle is a fixed steel oil platform installed in the Gulf of Mexico in 1988. And when you see something this big, you can't help but scratch your head and ask how the hell did it get there, especially since it's in the middle of the ocean. At the end of the 1980s, Bullwinkle was the third tallest freestanding structure in the world, standing 1,736 feet tall, with 1,352 feet of it below the waterline. The oil platform's jacket is what sits mostly submerged, and before it made its way to the Gulf, it took three years to build it in Texas by Gulf Marine Fabricators at a cost of a half a billion dollars. But the hard part really began after the completion of the jacket, when contractors took on the job of transporting the 50,000-ton, 1,400-foot-tall structure from the construction yard over land and then over water using a barge. That entire process took five whole days, and after all that work, it will be decommissioned by the end of its economic life, meaning it will likely have to be moved again. But when it was built, the Bullwinkle platform became the third tallest freestanding structure built after the Petronius and Baltpate compliant towers, but it was the tallest fixed steel structure that could be built on land, as is, without any modifications. The company installed a 7.5 mile oil pipeline connecting the Bullwinkle platform to the Boxer platform in Green Canyon 19, where initial production from the Bullwinkle field was processed. After those facilities were set, the platform produced oil into a 12-inch line that connected to the Boxer system, and then gas flowed into a separate 12-inch line that tied into what is now the Manta Ray system. The initial processing capacity of this platform was 59,000 barrels of oil per day and 100 million cubic feet of gas per day. So then, how do you move something like this? Well, contractors were hired to transport the 50,000-ton structure from the construction yard over land, and the entire process took days and it was the second tallest object to ever be moved from one location to another. And you know, after all that work, it's gonna be decommissioned and it's gonna have to be moved again. Number three, the Statue of Liberty. The story of how the Statue of Liberty made its incredible journey from France to its home on Liberty Island is as unique as those of the immigrants whom it greets. It all began when French thinker Edouard René de la Boulay had another brilliant idea. He thought, Hey, let's gift the United States a symbol of freedom to celebrate its 100th birthday. Well, maybe that's the short version, but it's where the Statue of Liberty story began. The sculptor in charge of this monumental project was Frederic Auguste Bartoli. He dreamed up this stunning statue of a lady holding a torch up high, representing enlightenment and liberty. But there was a twist. Bartoli designed the statue so it could be taken apart and put back together in the United States. Let's stay in France. The statue's copper skin and iron skeleton were carefully crafted, pieced together, and then taken apart again into more than 300 sections. These sections were packed into crates, ready for their transatlantic adventure. But this is long before Americans became spoiled by the notion of two-day shipping, and in-store pickup just wasn't an option. In 1885, these 300-some-odd crates embarked on a sea journey aboard the French Navy ship Isère. They braved rough seas, storms, and who knows what else for 27 days to reach New York Harbor. People were buzzing with excitement when the crates finally arrived in June of 1885 but there was a bit of a snag. The statue's pedestal wasn't quite ready yet due to some fundraising challenges. People were raising funds left and right, from regular folks to selling miniature versions of the statue. It was a real community effort, something New Yorkers know a thing or two about. While the pedestal issue was being sorted out, the assembly of the statue itself was underway. French and American engineers worked together, kind of like an international collaboration dream team. They first put together the iron framework, like the statue's skeleton, and then carefully attached the copper plates to it. And then the big day arrived. On October 28, 1886, the Statue of Liberty was unveiled in a massive celebration. Imagine a grand event with thousands of people, including the President of the United States and the French ambassador. They lit up the statue's torch, symbolizing the guiding light of freedom, and millions of people have seen it since, not just as tourists, but as folks being ferried towards the American dream. Perhaps that's the real transport operation. Number 2. Unit 1 Nuclear Reactor 
How do you transport a colossal one and a half million pound nuclear reactor across the vast expanse of Nevada's highways? Easy, very, very slowly, and with a lot of help, that's how. The mission of moving a retired nuclear reactor of massive proportions is about to unfold. The Apex Industrial Park in North Las Vegas is the stage for this modern marvel, delivered earlier this month. A 400-mile odyssey lies ahead, a journey that will snake through Nevada's highways, culminating in the reactor's resting place at a nuclear storage facility in northern Utah. Now, this just isn't any reactor. It is a one and a half million pound, 16 and a half foot diameter decommissioned reactor pressure vessel from the Southern California Edison San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station. Now, its ultimate destination, a nuclear waste storage facility in the rugged terrain of Northern Utah. In 2020, this technological titan made its way to North Las Vegas via a specially designed rail carrier. Now, everything about this endeavor is bespoke, right down to the truck and trailer transport system that was custom crafted to shoulder this task. The magnitude of this move is kind of mind boggling. After all, this is the largest cargo ever to grace Nevada's roads. It took six heavy duty Class 8 trucks with four tractors pushing and two pulling using a series of interconnecting tow bars to create a 23 foot tall, 306 foot long train, the same length as the Statue of Liberty laid on its side, to get a reaction out of the reactor. So, that's a roaring symphony of 4,000 horsepower collectively pulling this thing. The entire weight, an astounding 2.4 million pounds, finds equilibrium on an array of 460 tires, each up to 18 inches in width, a safeguard against any wear and tear on the state's infrastructure. With speed limits that dip far below 10 miles an hour, the entire journey took a painstaking, yet safe, seven days. But transporting something this big and this nuclear for 450 miles means safety is of the utmost importance. In the case of a fender bender, the reactor won't blow, but it could have caused the largest pileup of all time. Number 1. The Gulf Fox Sea Platform The honor of being the heaviest man-made object to ever be moved goes to the Gulf Fox Sea Platform in the Norwegian North Sea. But what is it exactly? Well, Gulfax is an oil and gas field in the North Sea that consists of three production platforms, Gulfax A, B, and C. The produced oil is transferred onto loading buoys in the field, while the gas is transported by pipeline for processing at a gas facility in Karsto near Stavanger. From there, the gas is routed for export. Gulfax A is also used for the storage and shipment of stable crude oil from the Viggis, the Visund, and the Snorre fields. Oil and gas from Gulfax B are transferred to A and C for processing, storage, and then export. Gulfax C has received and processed oil from the Tordis field since June of 1994. That field set a production record on October 7, 1994 with 605,000 barrels of oil. If it isn't clear already, Gulfax C is kind of the star of the show. The platform sits more than 700 feet below the ocean's surface and makes up for nearly half of the entire structure's height. Just to put all that into perspective, the structure is nearly 200 feet taller than the Eiffel Tower. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our channel members.